in southern Ontario, we do have winters where the temperature is reasonable and there's very little snow. Fami minus 15 degrees. We've had 60 centimeters of snow over the last week. Perfect conditions for driving two hot hatches. The brand new for 2022 Volkswagen GTI. This is the performance model. And what do you have? And over here we have the Mazda 3 Sport GT Turbo. Unlike the front wheel drive GTI, this new contender brings all wheel drive to the hot hatch table. Right. Normally you wouldn't think of the Mazda 3 as being a really hot hatch, but for 2021, Mazda put a 250 horsepower, two and a half liter turbo engine. Here, a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, 241 horsepower. Now horsepower is one thing, but there is another element at play here. The GTI performance as it sits here comes in with a, a robust 273 foot-pounds of torque. The two and a half liter turbo in the Mazda 3, however, will actually put out 320 foot-pounds of torque if you feed it the good 93. If you go for a regular 87 octane, power drops down to 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Whereas the Golf GTI makes all its power with 87 octane. That's a big difference, especially at the pumps. Having been around for some 40 years, the GTI is a darling for the enthusiast community, and it has a rabid following. The Mazda 3 does not have that same joyous pedigree. As it turns out, however, this everyman's Mazda 3 can actually be surprisingly entertaining. So we uh, take them for spins? I just want the heated steering wheels. Yeah, all right, let's take them for a spin <laughs> and get out of the cold. <laughs> So we're in the Mazda 3 Turbo. Mazda 3 Sport <laughs> so GT <laughs> Turbo. So let's talk some numbers here. Um, price. This is a 2021 model. Now there's no difference between this and the 2022 model other than the 22 model it costs another $500. You're all in at $36,500 and you can only get the GT Turbo in this one configuration. And you do get a lot for it. This is as well equipped as you could hope for a modern, sporty, everyday vehicle. It's got your standard suite of driving assist, lane keeping, adaptive cruise control, both mm -hmm. of which work quite well. Thoughtful details such as a volume knob that also serves to skip or pause your tracks. The uh, quality of the materials, I mean, uh, I don't know if this is leather. I'm going to assume it is, but you know, it's a very nice shade of red. It, uh, I mean, this it classes up the car immensely. It does. The leather does a lot for this, and this on the road feels quite solid. The sound deadening is quite nice. With the leather upholstery, it feels surprisingly plush for what you would expect. Absolutely, I do find the ride quality is a little bit more compromised than in the GTI. Now a big part of that is that the VW has a dynamic chassis control and you mm -hmm. can adjust the stiffness of your shocks. Yeah. This does not get that treatment. So the, the ride here is a little bit choppy over rougher surfaces. Um, the other thing I notice, the, the screen, the you know, on the center stack here, smallish, reasonable graphics, but um, you know, not state of the art. That said, the interface is well laid out, it's very tidy, it's very responsive, and it does all that we need it to. It may not be as fancy as the VW's, but as we're about to discuss also, the VW's not all rosy on the tech front. But uh, where it counts, I think it is. I mean, in terms of the the hard things, the engineering, the, the chassis control, the engine, the manual transmission, all top notch. The biggest thing about the Mazda is that, yes, it is a larger vehicle, but you're not gonna get that much more room. Uh, up front, lots of room for me. I'm a leggy six foot one. In the back seat, it's fairly tight. And considering it is larger than the GTI, leg room is like, we're talking a couple of millimeters more. The other thing is the way the body is designed, it curves in and I don't know about you, but I find it a bit confining myself. Dynamically, I do like the way the three turbo drives. It's, it 
doesn't ask much of you, and it rewards a decent drive, but it doesn't it doesn't excite you like the GTI does. It doesn't excite, but it will pull up when you ask it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So to get to this particular model, you start with obviously the Master 3 Sport, Sport indicating that it's the hatchback as opposed to the sedan. Then you pay $2,400 for the turbo upgrade, which gets you the two and a half liter engine. Required with that is the all wheel drive system. And this particular model, it also comes with a, a premium package with a you know, bunch of little features, $1,700 worth of features. You know what, it, it's reasonably priced. There's not a lot of all wheel drive vehicles with a big performance aspect to them that you can get for $36,300. As a year round exciting commuter, this really does tick a lot of the box. And bearing in mind too that this top of the line model comes in $10,000 shy of the average new car sale price in Canada, it really does start to look like something of a bargain. So now we're in the VW GTI Performance. As tested, this one is $40,245 to the Mazda 3's 363. The GTI comes with a smaller engine, but it puts out similar power to the Mazda when both are run on 87 octane regular fuel. Uh, space is similar between the two, but the real highlight here is the fact that this has three pedals. Manual transmission. I mean, you can get it with a seven speed dual clutch, but why would you? This is such a great transmission. It just makes the car jump. It, it's really one of the truly great front wheel drive performance vehicles. And the engine just likes to sing. On paper, the smaller engine in this VW does actually beat the Mazda ever so slightly in fuel economy. Mm -hmm. The GTI is rated for 9.8 liters per 100 city or 6.9 highway. That's compared to the 10.1 and 7.5 figures that you get in the Mazda. Not far off, but I noted that I was actually getting significantly worse numbers when I was driving it. But that's for a reason. You were, you were misbehaving, weren't you? I was misbehaving. This yeah. thing is heaps of fun. It makes such fantastic noises. Yeah. It's so fun to row it through the gears. It has six, but even on the highway, to be honest, I was only using four. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's solid. I mean, it's not a particularly heavy vehicle. Well. I mean, by modern standards. <laughs> by modern standards, yeah, it's about 500 kilograms more than the first generation. Many of these options are similar to what you get on the Mazda. In their top trims, these models both offer heads up display. Mm -hmm. It's got modern infotainment. In the case of the VW, you get wireless charging in addition to wireless Apple CarPlay, which is very nice to have. The big step in this Mark 8 GTI, however, is the step in the infotainment. VW has totally overhauled their entire user experience. And on one hand, it looks slick. Lots of piano blacks, high resolution screens. But on the other hand, they've tried to reinvent the wheel and not to always positive effect. Controls are frustrating. You do learn them and you do get the feel for them. And if you're driving this every day for three years, you'll be fine. But at a basic level, I think many people share the philosophy that basic functions should be immediately intuitive and anything else should be an extra garnish. Here you have to learn your way for the basic things. Things like quickly turning your seat heaters on and off without going through a menu require a two finger tap of the capacitive temperature control at the base of the screen. This isn't something that you find out unless you open the manual. And even once it's figured out, basic oversights like the lack of backlighting behind important controls like volume and temperature mean that things are invisible at night. It's really genuinely silly. Well, I guess people are so enamored with the driving dynamics of the car that they just might gloss over the rest of it. And personally, I probably could because once you're underway, you're not looking at those controls. You're looking at the windscreen. You're feeling your sides hugged by these excellently bolstered seats. Aren't they great? These seats are some of the best in the segment and they look great to boot. Mm -hmm. As we've noted, it's a frigid winter here. Mm -hmm. 
and the Mazda 3 really does show its value with that all-wheel drive system. Okay. I haven't had any problems with the GTI, but it is very easy to break those front tires loose on just gentle acceleration off the line. Whereas the Mazda 3 with that four-wheel drive, it's never an issue. We've talked about this before, the logic of all-wheel drive in a four-season climate. I can't say that I missed it. This has a really excellent set of Pirelli winter tires on. Um, I mean, the roads are clear and dry. Uh, if, if they weren't, yeah, I could feel different, but I don't know. Just dynamically, I just love the way this car drives. For all its flaws, I am genuinely delighted with it. And I think that that 10% step in cost over the Mazda is justified here. And it bears worth repeating that you don't have to go all in for the performance. You can get the... Autobahn or the base version, depends how much, I mean, you're not going to lose anything in the engine or the transmission and things like that. It's a matter of some of the added safety features like the uh, dynamic chassis control. The dynamic chassis control in this really does make a world of a difference. Yeah. It's got more adjustment levels than I think I've ever seen, and you do feel the difference between soft and sporty modes. Mm -hmm. Another thing that the VW has over the Mazda is general usability when it comes to your visibility. Sight lines out of the Golf are as good as you're going to find in a modern hatchback, whereas the Mazda 3 has some seriously compromised rear quarter views. On top of that, we'll both have 360 degree camera views, Volkswagen definitely has the clearer, sharper setup. Augmenting that is a really excellent sensor readout that shows your proximity to other vehicles. It's a very manageable vehicle in the city. In town, it, it's got such a lovely gearbox. It's just, the shifts are smooth. I mean, it's like the proverbial knife through butter. I really think this is one of the best manual transmissions you can get in a front drive car. Canada is a four season country. And right now we're in the middle of a really nasty winter. And so if you're being completely logical, the all wheel drive capability of the Sport GT Turbo makes more sense. But we're not always logical, are we? We're not, and we are coming into this as a bit of a performance review. And really there, the GTI simply delivers more smiles. Yes, this is capable of more power. It's technically capable of more traction with that all-wheel drive. But there's just something about the GTI, the noises it makes, the way it handles, the way it shifts. It's just an absolute thrill. The Mazda is fantastic. Slip inside, it's very elegantly put together it really actually puts the GTI's interior to shame. That said, those seats are really great. And once you're on the move, you're looking outside. So we really do have to decide a winner. We do. And for all the strengths of the Mazda 3 Sport GT Turbo, it's still got to be the GTI for us. 40 odd years, eight generations. It is an icon and deservedly so. For driving.ca, I'm Brian Harper. And I'm Elliot Alder. And for more performance cars, news, and reviews, check us out on Instagram and Twitter.